Hey there, I'm Mr. Terry. I'm a high school history teacher. Welcome back to another History Teacher X video. All right, the channel Good Enough is continuing to explode. Their video here that I'm gonna check out has been out for four days and it's got, well, by the time you watch this, probably 900,000 views. So people are watching, I can see why. It's got the salmonella style that everybody loves. All right, this video is called The Deadliest Foods in the World. The question about that is, is it food if it's deadly? Why are we eating it then? All right, I'm excited to learn and comment on it. All right, original videos down below. Make sure you check that out. And thank you all so much. The channel just hit 400,000 subs, a number that I can't believe happened this quick or happened at all. All right, let's get started. All right, Ooh, I just ate dinner, so this doesn't like make me sick or something. And hopefully nothing on this list uh, is deadly. I had tacos, so uh, we'll see. Let's start with the dangerous and slowly work our way towards the deadliest ones on I've the list. I've had a lot of tacos on Number my five. Cassio wait, wait, Mar so this is, wait, for five's, okay, dangerous to, okay, so. Slowly work our way towards the deadliest ones on the list. Number five, Kasu Marsu. Kasu Marsu translates to rotten cheese in Sardinian and is known as the Leave most the dangerous cheese in the world. Ugh. This is a cheese that is traditionally made using Whoa, cheese milk and that. is commonly produced on the island of Sardinia, okay. Italy. Even though it's illegal to sell, the high demand for this delicacy incentivizes local farmers to keep producing it, creating a massive black market that is estimated to bring in around 2.5 million pounds or around $3 million annually. We got guns. No, no, we thank you. We got drugs. <laughs> no. Fresh kidneys. Wow. Oh, and we have cheese. Um, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll just go with the cheese. The reason this cheese is so dangerous is simply because of the way that it is made, which first starts with the wheel of pecorino cheese. It is then introduced to cheese flies, where they will begin okay. to lay their eggs inside it. And in a matter of hours to a few days, there other types these of cheese eggs that do this become too, larvae. Kind of? And around the 40th day, Maggoty the cheese, cheese is completely infested with flies and thousands of maggots. For the next two to three months, the maggots are left to gorge themselves with the cheese so they can well poop, out. poop it back out and, that and that's good. the magical ingredient here since the poop gives the cheese its sought after flavor and texture and honestly the texture does look amazing uh, i'll give them yeah. that it doesn't look but when bad. it's time to consume the rotten cheese expect to get around a dozen maggots with every single bite since they are never removed Scientists and health officials have warned that there's always a possibility that the larvae could survive a person's stomach acid and make their way into the intestines, a condition called pseudomyiasis, mm. where the person's intestines become completely infested with maggots, surviving yeah, just by consuming ate. the person instead, successfully pulling off the sneakiest Uno reverse card. <laughs> Even though this condition is rare, I don't think I would be willing to risk it all for a taste of this deliciously textured cheese. Well, maybe just one bite. Like, it, does it taste good, though? That's the <laughs> number. F so that's the thing. Like, does it taste good, though? Okay, there's weird stuff. There's weird food out there and processes, processes to make food, you know, historically. And I'm sure glad I don't eat the food that people did in history. Have you ever looked at diets and stuff like medieval Europe? It's like, okay, here's your onions and your turnips. And if you're lucky, maybe get a little piece of meat and that's just what you eat. But, oh, gross. So anyway, I mean, if it does, if you don't think it's going to kill you, I, I, I'll try it. Let, let's figure that out too. Let me know which of these, which of these foods would you actually try? Like I, I try it, I guess. You know, I mean, I don't, I'm going to like to go through the larva. It's, I don't know. Okay. Italy. What y'all doing? All right. What do we got now? Larb. Larb is a type of salad larb? that consists. <laughs> Number four. Yeah, which ones would you try? Larb is a type of salad that consists of greens, spices, sticky rice, okay, and a good. choice of meat. Sounds this good. This dish originated in South Asia in sounds Laos. So far. And is a very popular dish there. Love meat salad. Even becoming its national dish. At first glance, this would definitely be something I would consider ordering while on vacation. Sounds great. If okay. I ever took any. What's the catch? Now here's the <laughs> thing. Even though this dish looks delicious, it can anymore. quickly become deadly wow. since this meal is oftentimes served with raw meat. There are many oh. types of meat that can be used for yeah, this dish, sushi. but the most sure. common ones include beef, chicken, yeah. duck, fish, and pork. Sure. Like, yeah, you can do that. You can eat raw meat technically or at least very very close to all because it gets to a 
I mean, a temperature of some kind, but even, even some that don't get a temperature. If you looked at like, you know how they have raw steaks and then there's, there's one that's even more raw called blue. It's like, depending, those ones like don't get to the temperature that you're supposed to get to kill bacteria, but certain cuts of meat, um, don't have the certain, certain types of bacteria. And I just, I don't like it from an appetizing thing, but yeah, you can actually do it with sushi. So I still like, I like sushi, but I'm still not super adventurous with the, the really raw stuff. Are you guys? And eating this meal uncooked drastically increases the odds of you contracting a dangerous and potentially fatal disease. But all that yeah. from trichinosis, fatal bacteria, they're not careful, rabies, streptococcus suis, which is a deadly bacteria that is commonly found in pigs, and Southeast Asian liver fluke, a parasitical flatworm found in uncooked fish, which once consumed, the worm can live inside the human of liver for many years a lot of uh, where you can rest easy knowing that you'll never truly be alone there have been many cases throughout the years where this meal has directly led to human fatalities like in 2019 in thailand is where a, a total of 265 people contracted streptococcus suisse after consuming larb and sadly wow. 23 of those people would end up losing their lives number what well, i wonder too though if those were um, locals like you know one thing historically get you got to get your history from me right um, historically is we adapt to <coughs> the food that's around us right we ancestrally we inherit characteristics of our digestive system from our ancestors and we are more likely to be able to consume certain types of foods and because they have certain types of like you know they may have certain types of bacteria or something that we become immune to it's just part of evolution right but give that to somebody else that's not used to that it's like a lot of the world uh is a lot of people don't know are, are you know lactose intolerant a lot of people if you're uh like uh indigenous peoples um, that didn't have cattle of different places in the world, you know, they still, you know, ancestrally will still have, um, have, uh, uh, like lactose intolerance. So, all right. So number three, all right. So we're in the middle of the list. Sanak G. In Korea, Sanak G could be enjoyed multiple different ways, okay. but let's cover the least deadly one first and I love the most Korean common. Sanak G is a raw barbecue. dish consisting of the long arm octopus, which is killed okay, just moments like before it's to be served. Here, the octopus's body and legs are chopped oh. into pieces and drizzled with sesame so oil. Sad. And by the time this makes it onto your plate, mainly. the legs will still be moving. As you begin to eat, the octopus's suckers will begin to suction onto your tongue and throat, <laughs> making it difficult to swallow. But I know that if I ever came You're face to face with this meal, I would have no choice but to totally crush because, it. Well, do the yeah, well, do the sucker the suckers? I, I've assumed they reflect like their reflexes, right? So when they they feel a surface, they probably automatically sucked, right? Even without a, like a brain functioning that process. Since I have talked way too much of a big game, watching people struggle as they eat disgusting foods on the challenge. No, 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 I'm telling you, you just have to plug your nose and just power through it. It all comes back to this thing, though, okay? Does it taste good? Like, there's so many foods that people eat that aren't good. Why are we eating bad food? Unless we're, like, desperate and poor, you know what I mean? But, like, does it taste good? That's the most important thing, right? Sure. Right? Oh, my God, just chase that? it with the water. Mm -hmm. He's yeah, wasting so much time. Drink. Yeah. So I have a lot to prove. It seems like you would choke. Now, the second method, on the other hand, is much more challenging and poses a much greater risk of death. And honestly, it's more of a one-on-one -on -one fight rather than an actual meal. Why? Here, the octopus reaches your plate fully intact and alive, where it is then tightly wrapped around a chopstick dipped in sesame oil and shoved into your mouth. But who are they kidding? Not, the sesame no oil is not meant to enhance the meal. It is simply used to rig the fight in the cheating human's favor, as it will now it serve as a it? lubricant. And as soon as the 1v1 starts, the octopus begins to attack, squirming to find its way out, frantically suctioning on to whatever it can get a hold of. No. But if you're the human, you must completely focus on your chewing. Soon, your hands begin to get sweaty, and within no. seconds, you begin to break out into a mental panic, questioning yourself, thinking that this might have been a mistake. With your heart beginning to race, you try and cover up your fear by chewing harder and faster. And you have now convinced yourself that it's like now or never. It's time to attempt the swallow. But oh there's God. a problem. The octopus no is still it. moving. No, the stairs of everyone like at the table are piercing. And you feel the ever-growing peer pressure accumulating. Like food for so you're forced to go for it. 
praying to whatever god is listening that the octopus doesn't latch itself onto your throat as you try and swallow Seriously, it as that would you. surely be a death sentence you force the ball of squirming octopus down your throat and for a second your heart stops you would choke but you manage to swallow it with your heart still racing and a bead of sweat coming down the back of your neck you look over at your buddy and say eh it's not so bad you got it. As you get up to go clean yourself up in the bathroom. Oh, what the hell? <laughs> there have been multiple deaths in the last few years directly linked to eating live octopus. Even though the danger is obvious, people still search out this delicacy. With some athletes even claiming that this meal increases a person's endurance. But others simply do it for the experience that they will get when they show off the post online. Yeah. Number that's a, two. That's a total Fugu. Instagram thing. All right. So thinking about the three things we've seen so far, I, I, I guess I would try the cheese. Like, you know what I mean? It, that's pretty adventurous. The salad, it'd be like a sushi salad. Like, I might be down with that. If I, if I can trust its source, we're now at the no. Like, no. No category. Um, and not just the where you eat it live, but when you chop it up and it's wiggling around. I, no, no I'm, I'm not doing that. I don't think I could actually keep it down. I would throw up. This is one of the deadliest foods in the world, where a single would mistake in the the preparation one? could mean life or death. Okay, I've heard Fugu of stuff like this where, like, if you don't remove certain parts of it or cook it in a certain way, it becomes poisonous. There's a dish there's that fish, originated right? in Japan in the early 20th yeah, century. But as time has gone on, the dish's popularity has only grown, so just so spreading good? to many countries like China and South Korea. This is a meal that... Is, I'm going to be interested in this because I've, I've heard of this fish before, but I don't know about the preparation. So, like, how, how does it become dead? consists of a poisonous puffer fish that has had the poison carefully removed from it. Well... At least that's what should be done, but okay. more on that later. In it's countries just, like Japan, a, a chef must go through long and rigorous training to learn how to properly remove the poison from the meat. The training so. <laughs> takes up to three years to complete, followed by a string of exams, which include a written test, fish identification test, <laughs> a practical test, fish school, and then a bunch of experience, right? And of course, like that successfully preparing the dish. This test is so difficult. Do you think only... about it, would you have to test it yourself? Because like, if I'm the teacher, I'm not test eating that. <laughs> you got to test it on yourself. 35% right? of all applicants end up passing it and acquiring the many... license. That only 35% of all applicants end Third. up passing it and acquiring the license. The reason the puffer fish is so dangerous is because it contains a poison called tetrodotoxin, which is one of the world's most deadliest poisons. A single puffer fish has enough Who's poison like the first to kill 30 this? adult humans. Oh now, here's gosh. the terrifying part. If someone happens to be so unlucky that they end up consuming even a small amount of the poison, they will be presented with a prayer and a splash of holy water. Sign a waiver Since there is no known antidote, at these restaurants. the poison kicks in shortly after eating it, with your muscles becoming completely paralyzed. And eventually, it could cause you to stop breathing. And this is probably when you would start to think to yourself, damn, I should have just gone with the chicken dumplings. Exactly. The deadliest year ever recorded was in 1958, when 176 people lost their lives to this food alone. Today in Japan, the odds of you dying from fugu are very, very slim, yeah, as long as you order from a licensed restaurant. Since most not deaths in that. recent history have come from people who attempted to prepare the dish at home, but sometimes pure evil okay. and selfishness increase the death rate even higher. Like in 2004, when fish vendors in Thailand tricked people for three years by dyeing the pufferfish meat red and telling buyers that the meat they were selling was right. salmon, leading to 115 Why? people needing to be hospitalized and 15 of them sadly losing their lives. Number one. Okay. All right. All right. Let me ask you this. So that last one, that fish, if you went to a licensed place like that and, and it was really good, like you knew the that the fish was good, would would you do it like that? I'm like, I don't know. I mean, I'm not like I want to be a wuss, but like if it was really good just to say you did it and you were super confident, like I'd be more likely to do that than the octopus one, though. OK, number one. OK. Uh, all right. Wild and exotic it? wet markets. Now, okay. of course, this had to be number one on the list since a single meal from one of these wet markets carries the greatest risk to human health. This is one of the rare instances where a single meal consumed by an individual doesn't just affect the person See, eating it. it. This is the stuff that gets us like, like COVID and like anthrax or, you know, all these like 
bird f- flu, like weird things. It's like we're doing these weird things that we should never have done in the first place that turns into like global pandam- pandemic. It says where a single meal consumed by an individual doesn't just affect the person eating it, it could potentially affect every person right. on the planet. Yeah. Now, okay. I know what you're thinking. What could possibly be so delicious that it's worth putting the entire world's population in jeopardy? Brownies. The, the answer is Weren't brownies. they saying, is it, is it confirmed that like, like COVID came out of one of these, one of these markets? I've heard things all over the place and haven't done some real good due diligence on that. But wasn't that like a thing that they're thinking now? But as far as wet markets go, yeah, I don't think snakes, turtles, dogs, cats, bats, my food. nephew, porcupines, or raccoons would be a justifiable the, answer. Those aren't food. And it seems like every few Not years food. without fail, the world gets a massive scare when a deadly disease breaks out. And of course, they always seem to be traced back to one of these wet markets. Yeah. Remember the SARS outbreak of yeah, 2002? SARS. Me neither. But it's widely yeah. believed by epidemiologists yeah. and public health officials that this isn't, outbreak isn't COVID a form of SARS. Isn't that true too? Originated from a wet market in the Guangdong province of China. What about the Ebola outbreak of 2014? Ebola. Remember how terrified everyone was to even let out a cough, as you would forever be known as the person with Ebola. <laughs> yeah. The origins of the 2014 Ebola outbreak was traced to a small child whose family regularly hunted and consumed the bats. Sure, this wasn't a wet market, but it easily could have been. And last but not least, as we all know, the recent pandemic we just had is widely believed to have originated in China from a bat in the Wuhan wet market. These are just a few of the diseases that have caused a massive scare in recent times. But here are some other diseases that are known to be present in these wild and exotic wet markets. The reason these wet markets pose such a hazard to humans is largely on the fact that almost all the meat will be cross-contaminated by the time it's sold so is it just is this just a thing because it's it's is it food (coughs) it's gonna be sold very cheap and because of that you know a lot of corners are cut and why these markets can even exist like how are these not shut since being sanitary is not really of the utmost importance this included with the close proximity of wild animals makes it easy for diseases from animals to infect humans and the hot and humid conditions in a lot of these markets make it a perfect place for the growth of bacteria and spread of disease or possibly something even worse yay <laughs> well, we can all go to bed safely tonight oh gosh all right another video that failed curses of the plague or cures for the plague. I covered that video. I'll link it up after here. That's a really good one too. All right, final thoughts. All right, so I asked you at the beginning of the video, I want to see you down in the comments of the five things, which would you eat? Which would you eat from those? How daring are you? Let me know. All right, thanks again for everybody for uh, watching. Um, Again, thanks so much for hitting 400,000 subs. It's awesome. Look out for some other posts for me, maybe about some benefits and stuff. I'm going to try to start... um, Try to give give uh, supporters, you know, a little bit more, uh, a little more back um, for their for their support. Um, come over to the Discord server. We have a lot of fun over there. And with that, we'll see you all next time. Bye.